Welcome to the MA Roadshow, episode number 365. That's right. We got one episode for every day of the year. If you if you have never listened before, you can start now and one year from now you will be completely caught up. Well, I guess you'd be caught up to where we are now, and then we'd still have Yeah, then you'd be guys. really you know, far behind. <laughs> then you're behind, so don't do that, but it's an option. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is joining me from the beautiful, wonderful, luxurious, yeah. amazing, yeah. I don't other adjectives for incredible, Columbus, Ohio. Oh. It's, a, it's, a, it's a trip home, right? I mean, Columbus, Ohio is actually the hometown, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I went to high school in Gehanna, which is a, a suburb on the west side. But after uh, high school, I moved uh, down to the downtown area into, like, Columbus proper. Um, and that's where I spent the, the rest of the years while I was here before I moved out to Vegas. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like one of those things that, you know, most people, even out in the burbs, you know, they'll usually, if somebody asks where they say, you know, most people would say Columbus, you know, and then if, if the right. people know the area, then they'll break it down and say, oh, I'm from Dublin or Worthington or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, Seabus for the most part, this is uh, this is home. Um, it's good to be back. It's good to be. In fact, I'm staying uh, just, uh, let's see, just west of campus across the um, the Olentangy River. Campus, um, you say? Is there is there a school out there? I'm not. Is it like a community yeah, you college, know, it's, maybe? It's, or? it's it's one of the schools out here. Um, <laughs> it's one of the best schools out here. They have uh, one of the best athletic programs, and they have uh, like 36 varsity sports at this school. Um, it's it's a pretty good one. <laughs> Look at that! I love you dropping the the in there. The, the Ohio mm-hmm. State University, of course, a proud Buckeye is cold coffee. So glad uh, you know, glad you got the trip back. Obviously, you got a pretty good fight card on your hand, but you've been there for a while uh, because you were kind yeah. of uh, you know doing an in depth project with Matt Brown. I'll be honest with you, as we sit down to record this, I have seen that it's been released. I have not had a chance to watch it yet, so I I feel guilty in the fact Neither that I'm did sitting Matt here and Brown. I haven't watched it. But I will, <laughs> Matt Brown hasn't watched it. Either. <laughs> That's hilarious. So t- I tell saw, us about I the saw him. I saw him at the. I saw him at the media day, and I went over to tell him. I was like, "Oh man, you're gonna have to do me a favor and apologize, you know, to Connor, his his business partner, because um, he was one of the people that I interviewed about the Immortal Coffee, about the gym, you know, just as another person, as a soundbite, you know. But everything about this project, you know, I've done it bigger than what I initially thought, you know. So. You know, from the day where I had, you know, when we got down the interview, I had like four pages of notes. And then I'm thinking like, oh, you know, Matt, give me like 30 minutes. This is going to be like a 30 minute interview. The interview ran an hour and a half. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) let's see what else. I mean, because his answers were very long and thoughtful, you know, and then there were also still follow ups that kind of went in there as well. Right. Um, So that was good. Um, But, yeah, the project was, you know, part of it was. You know, even though he won't admit it in his mind, he wants to keep fighting for another 10, 20 years, you know, sign another eight fight contract and then maybe another one after that, you know. But ultimately, you know, when I was thinking about it, one, um, you know, Matt's always been a fighter I've respected for his fight style and and uh, how he carries himself. And he's from Columbus, you know, even the first sure. time I met him, I had no idea who Matt Brown was. But when, the, uh, you know, I heard them, and this is when I still worked for the UFC, and then somebody was like, you know, blah, 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 fighter from Columbus, Ohio. And I was like, wait, what? Who? What? Who's this? I was like, this must be my best friend, you know. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, so I wanted to put a spotlight on him. But ultimately, I mean, he's 41 years old. Whether he wants to think it's near the sunset of his career or not, you know, us on the outside can at least, you know, guess or think that that is going to happen at some point. So wanted to put a little bit of shine on him and just talk a little bit more about his, his career. You know, I mean, honestly, and even when the interview was happening and even when subsequent interviews happened, that thing that happened with Khalil recently has just really been sitting on my mind about, mm. um, you know, are we doing enough to give fighters a chance to sort of really tell their story and then have us, you know, double back and check on them and stuff. So part of this interview, you know, I didn't even ask. I asked him one time, and it was after the interview was done. I said, let me ask you a question about your opponent, Barbarina. I'm only going to do this because if I tell my bosses I didn't ask you one question at all about him, they might be like, you've lost your mind. 
But ultimately, <laughs> I knew that we were going to get him today and media day. So I said, why right. am I going to make this project and and cut the cut the life of it short and make it sort of be about this fight camp when it's not about the fight camp. It's about him and about where he came from and, and led him to this point and, you know, and what his career aspirations are going forward, you know, for after his fighting days, where he's at, what's made him the way he is. And um, so it was, it was just, it was a deeper dive like that. But part of that, you know, when I was asking some of the questions and even, you know, when we got the interview with Mark Coleman and when you get to the Coleman part of the interview, that was, it was very powerful. I watched it again uh, today. Um, I teared up, you know, uh, part of it was like, I'm not, I don't have kids. I don't have family, but there's a section in the video where right before when I asked Matt, you know, what's it mean to have Mark in your corner and you see Mark interacting with, um, uh, Matt's daughter, you know, and so, you know, Matt kind of calls him like, oh, you know, it's like having grandpa around or dad around, you know, and then that started getting me like a little, I was getting some feels. And then we got into yeah, the yeah. section and where Mark actually starts breaking down, um, overcoming, uh, being an alcoholic, alcoholic and the stuff he had to deal with. And that brought back like, cause I even talked with Mark off camera, you know, I didn't obviously put it in there, you know. But my father was an abusive alcoholic, you know, and we eventually got that fixed. Um, and there were points when my dad uh, had to leave us and went to, uh, to stay away. We had to live with one of his coworkers while my dad was getting treatment, you know, and wow. and just hearing Mark struggle and, you know, him hearing him talk about how he was trying to, you know, in his own way, he was trying to put out signs. He was trying to put out feelers for help. Uh, and then eventually somebody picked up on it, but seeing him describe it um, again this morning, I was just like, and I didn't get emotional as I was like when it happened or before, but I think more in hindsight after it, after it was done, kind of hit me harder um, uh -huh. than when I actually put it, you know, because I think I had more time to, to digest what really happened. I knew when it happened in the interview, I was like, this is a really, really powerful moment. You know, here's this UFC Hall of Famer, one of the at one point in time, one of the scariest individuals sure. on the world, and here he yep. is, bearing himself and and showing his um, vulnerability in a moment and how he's overcame something. And it was just, it was super, super powerful. And it was just like one of those things that you know you can't. I never planned for it, but I knew once it was happening. And then I hear Khalil in my head. I was like, I got to make sure I dive further into this and ask, um, you know, the questions about this. And even with Matt asking some of those questions about stuff like that, um, as opposed to just saying, hey, you know, talk to me about Barbarina. And so the piece ended up going really long and the interview was really, really long. But um, I hope people like it. I mean, I've, you know, so far, you know, I mean, it's not like it's doing gangbusters on YouTube and nothing ever initially does. But the initial, you know, just response from the guys within the group um, have been pretty good. You know, you know, it's tough on projects like this. You get too, it's, sometimes you get too close to it. Sure. And, uh, you know, I know there's things I would do differently next time around. But I know that there are things I tried differently in this one than some other things. Um but it was it was a it was a heavy lift. I mean, it was almost um, we shot Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, Sunday. Um, shot a teeny bit, and I never even actually used that B roll of him um, using a different person's um, sauna. And then I came back, edited on Sunday all the way through rest of Sunday, and then edited on Monday all the way through Monday till. I think I finished. There was a pro the the internet was crappy uploading. I think I finished and saw that it was uploaded at three thirty in the morning uh, on Monday, going into you know Tuesday or whatever. So um, it was a crazy lift, man. But I mean, um, it was fantastic. It was it was a wonderful project. You know, Matt was you know as honest and open and very into it. You know, um, so I'd love to do those sort of things again. But yeah, man, it was a. Uh, it was very emotional. It was a lot of work, but man, it uh, there was a lot of great things I think came out of it. But man, it definitely had its emotional moments um, as well that I, I had you know didn't plan on anything like that happening. Uh -huh. But um, 
you know, it's just one of those things it does. So um, it was it's unique. Awesome. It was it was very. It's cool. awesome, man. I, yeah. I look forward to checking it out. I definitely apologize that I haven't yet. Obviously, uh, doing this uh, one man gang stuff that I'm doing right now, yeah. my my <laughs> spare time is is little. But I definitely look forward to checking out. And I obviously, man, hearing you talk about it, certainly recommend even without seeing it that everybody does check it out. You know, you bring up something that's interesting there too, man, with the whole Khalil Roundtree situation. Of course, you're referring to. Uh, you know, his post-fight emotions and saying that we're not asking the right questions and not talking about the right thing. It's interesting. I feel like it's kind of a double-edged sword because I, I can appreciate that. But, like, yeah. I always – I'm always worried, especially on fight weeks. Now, I know you got there a little bit early, so you, you had a couple of extra, you know, days before they're really into that fight week mindset. But I do always worry, too, that, like – you know, when the guys are in that kind of fight week mindset, when they're kind of in that moment of like, look, they're trying to prepare for this and have themselves psychologically ready and mentally ready and they're focused on the fight, that pulling them out of that to talk about their goals outside of the cage or projects outside is almost like misplaced. You know what I mean? Like it's not the right time or place to talk about that. So I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing to consider. Like on the one hand, that's really, for the most part, the only time we see a lot of these guys – but at the same time, you know, are we doing a disservice if we interrupt them from the normal flow, or should we be feeding into that a little bit more and maybe giving them more of a platform to talk about things outside of just a fight? It's kind of a weird spot. Yeah, you know, and I wonder if part of it, too, he was so at ease um, when it got down to it. But honestly, I think most of them at that point, I think, would probably tell us that it's, it's that at that point in the camp, it's just their battle with the weight cut. So, I mean, as long as we probably weren't doing anything to affect that, he was, I mean, he, he's always very light. I think when I got there, he was 185, and this was like a week out, you know. So, or, you know, yeah, over a week out of when he was weighing in, and uh, he certainly wasn't, you know, nervous about it. But also, too, maybe being at home put him at another at-ease part that maybe somebody else – if say if they weren't at home and they were on the road, maybe their mind wouldn't be as open to sort of take such a deep dive. But let alone if somebody's cutting weight, the point. last thing they're going to want to do is have some dude like me asking them to do an interview and have it take an hour and a half if they're really like trying to cut weight. Because yeah, yeah. you know we don't, we know that I mean when it gets down, especially that fight week, um, those guys have their days planned out by the hours depending on you yes. know when they're going to work out, when they're going to try to, you know, have some water, when they're actually trying to sleep, you know, when they're trying to do a little workout to get a sweat on, you know, that kind of lift, it's almost, it's almost too hard to ask, you know, for that much time if they were away from something or whatever. But um, I still think it, it would be unique if, you know, this one had just happened to work out because um, – I think there's a little bit of luck that, you know, we're able to do it. I would rec I, I think to your point, it's probably not the best thing to do to a fighter if they are in this this camp. It's almost like better to do when they're not a week or two out. Yeah. Just so there isn't all those other other variables. Because you're right. I mean, one, if somebody is cutting weight too, you're gonna be getting that grumpy, you know, whatever. I'm just trying to, you know, not chew my lips off and to chew your face off, you know, when you're asking me <laughs> questions, you know. Um, so, yeah, going forward, I mean, I definitely think that's probably something to, to take into account where um, that does put a different spin on it where this one worked out where it's like, hey, I go out early, then stay for the fight week. Um, it might be better to think about for the next target, if we get the okay to do it again, just somebody that's not in camp and just make the decision, hey, I'm going to go out to this person's place for three or four days shoot what we can and then turn it you know quickly or something but i don't know maybe there is something to the you know the upcoming fight that it's something new and different to put it towards the fight but um i think then you'd have to maybe pick the right target because if somebody struggles with weight um we're not going to get the, the self that we want probably not at all that Not wants to be introspective and reflect on their past and you know all that other good stuff. So um, it's a tough spot. It's, we'll I feel see. like it's it's almost we'll a, it's a it no is. win situation. But uh, listen, I look forward to checking out the project. As you said, Matt Brown versus Brian Barberina, USC on ESPN 33 Nationwide Arena, Columbus, Ohio. That's going to be a hell of a, a, a fight. And listen, honestly. A solid card. I know you just got done with media day. I, I, I'm not there, of course. I'm back home in Las Vegas. So I didn't do a media day, but I did speak to both Curtis Blades and Chris Dawkins. 
Um, I actually really enjoyed uh, speaking to Curtis Blades one on one. So if you guys want to check those interviews out, they are up on the Underground's YouTube page, the the very new Underground YouTube page. So if you want to find that and uh, subscribe to it, I certainly would appreciate it. I'll be getting uh, interviews like this moving forward. It looks like, but I did one on ones uh, with Curtis Blades and Chris Darkus. Obviously, I've known. Chris for a while through uh, his time in the CFFC, so that went great uh, in talking to him and, and him just being super open about, you know, the loss that he suffered and the lessons that were there and, you know, I mean, the guy was having like an absolutely perfect UFC run coming in and knocking people out in the first round and getting performance bonuses. I mean, that's not going to last forever. You're going to lose at some point and I think even Chris is just kind of embracing that, yeah, you know, there was a you know, it was bound to happen, and it did, and I've taken my lessons from it, and now I'm here, and I realize what a big opportunity I've been given, and meanwhile, Curtis was great as well. It was funny. Curtis actually apologized to me, cold coffee, and said, look, I know that I make your guys' jobs terrible because I don't talk a lot, and he was like, it's just, I mean, he was like, I know I make your job hard, because I was just asking him, I was like, look, man, you know, I know, I know that, uh, you know, headlining is these big spots, I'm just curious what you think about media day, do you, do you wake up and go, oh, I can't wait to go talk to these guys and tell my story or do you like oh I gotta deal with these jackasses again he is like well not the he's like not the jackass part but yeah I don't really look forward to it that much so yeah uh he was in good spirits as well so what'd you see from the headliners today out there in Columbus you know I thought they both looked good I mean they both looked prepared I mean I, I think Curtis was you know nice and um you know relaxed you know he said he'd been working on his striking you know um you know, I, I tried to ask him, I was like, is it as simple as this is just a striker versus a wrestler? And he, I don't, it was almost like he was like, you know, people tend to forget that I've been knocking these dudes out. You know, he's <laughs> like, I took down JDS. I took down this guy. I took down this guy, you know? And then I was almost like, I was like, damn, okay, okay. My bad. I mean, but you know, when it gets into it, that wrestling's always right there. And it's, yep. it would seem silly that, uh, you know, when I look at Chris Dawkins, it, to me, um, I see striker. I see somebody that's not going to be anywhere willing or able to kind of defend against Curtis. If Curtis wants to take him down, Curtis is going to get him down. And uh, But I don't know. It seems to me that Curtis fancies himself as a striker now. So maybe, you know, that plays into uh, Chris's favor because Chris has got that puncher's chance. You know, he's got good power. He's got really good fast hands, too. I mean – like like really really fast hands. Every time I see him throw some some hands, I'm always like, man, his hands are really really fast. So yeah. um, it just depends, you know. You would think if you were really good at something like wrestling, like who cares? Like you know, just embrace it and just get him down and just fucking weigh heavy on him and beat him up. You know, get that W. Um, but I thought both guys were in great spirits. Um, Dawkins, man, I don't think I've ever seen him come in grumpy to nah. a media day he always has a great personality um he's enjoying um life outside of being a, a police officer you know said he had those moments of you know of sort of doubt and dark spaces you know when after that you know just making sure you know because then you got the, all the worries and the pressures of providing for your family i mean you know all about that you know you're for a while you were a one income family so that's a lot of pressure yeah. to put on your on yourself and then leaving something uh, a set job with benefits and stuff that's got to be nerve-wracking but um it is yeah. <laughs> it is it is you're, fre can, you're can, freshly reminded uh, about that i, I, I can i can confirm that for mr chris Dawkins, man it, it, it is is a little bit scary at times but uh but i i agree yeah you wonder i mean because right he he walked away from the police job and then you lose the first fight after you've walked away from the police job that's got to be yeah. a little bit a little bit nerve-wracking i guess or 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 you know concerning or emotionally upsetting so uh but if he if he if he rebounds with a big win over curtis blades i mean now you're that's right huge. back at the top of the division man you're right that's it i mean like that, that's a fast track right there i mean like curtis is no joke curtis has fought everybody at the top you know i mean mm -hmm. so chris gets that man he uh he, he steps back up there he steps in there with the big boys for sure i mean we can't yeah. take that away from him a lot on the line here. Not sure, you know, and talked to both guys about what they thought. Obviously, you know, USC President Dana White came out last week and did say, looks like we may be leaning towards an interim heavyweight title, uh, you know, with Francis Nagano out. Depending on how long he's going to be out, we may go in. And I asked both the guys about it, and they, they did both say, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. You know, I certainly think it's a possibility. But uh, Curtis especially was like, I can't control that, man. He's like, I'm not giving it one ounce of energy whatsoever. But it is interesting. I mean, I, I haven't necessarily heard 
the winner of, you know, anybody saying, hey, the winner of this fight should be involved in that interim. Of course, you hear, well, I mean, you're, now you're already hearing about, like, Tom Aspinall, as great as he looked last week. But, you know, your Cyril Gaon is out there. Of course, Steve Miocic. If John Jones actually gets in the mix, you know, would he be in it? So you hear the – I haven't heard anybody really make a case that the winner of this should be involved in an interim title fight should it happen. But – Hey, man, we know this is all about timing and health and all those things, right? I mean, I would at least say that the winner would need to be in the conversation as an option if, if something like that was there. So I think there's some, there's some stakes on this. It may not lead immediately to an interim title shot or something like that, but it's a big one for, the, for whoever comes out of it victorious. Yeah, I mean, it'd be hard to not at least think that they were in that contender talk. You know, you're right. It, I think it would have to be a spectacular um, – Knockout, and I almost wonder if it's leaning in a certain direction. I wonder if Curtis got a, a definitive knockout, if he wouldn't maybe have a step up on because of his past opponents he's went through that maybe it would give him a heads up or something. But I would think at least if it puts them in the driving uh, seat to be in that contender talk to where, you know, if they did need another one and then maybe put him up against – you know, maybe that'd be one to put Aspinall if, if they're really trying to um, fast track him. I mean, I thought he looked really good, but man, I just feel like this kid's just, he just came out of nowhere and all of a sudden, you yeah. know, he had some good fights and now we're like, all right, you're, you're next in line. I'm like, slow your roll. I mean, like, granted, what he did to Volkov was super, super impressive, but, you know, Volkov wasn't right there knocking on the door either, you know, so... Um, you know, in that old game of, you know, I'll, you lose, I take your spot, you know, what what did he actually take? You know, I mean, it wasn't right. like with that win, he, he made himself, you know, the number one, you know, contender, but maybe it put him in um, the spot to fight for the number one contendership, you know, against one of these other guys that sort of been around for a while and maybe fought more of a who's who's list, but that's nothing against Tom. I like his personality. I like the way he carries himself, and I certainly like the way he fights. I mean, that was uh, that was super impressive, you know. Yes, but it was. Um, you know, I wonder if that w isn't more maybe a sign that you know maybe Volkov is has over over peaked. I mean, like we saw maybe we saw his 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 best was in the past. You know, it might be one of those things where. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. He was at one point, you know, as tough as anybody. But I just wonder if maybe he isn't um, really near that top anymore with the level of the guys that have beaten him and the level of the other guys, you know, stepping up to that. I wonder if, you know, if Volkov's still um, in that same sort of range. So if I that's mean, the case, it, it, is that victory over him enough to say that you're even in the contender, you know? It's a fair question to ask. I mean, the dude's been around for a long time, and he definitely didn't look fantastic. And then you start wondering, is that a product of just how good Aspinall looked? Or, as you said, is, is Volkov maybe a little bit in decline? I think it's at least a fair question to ask. I don't think we necessarily know the answer yet, but we probably will. You know, another one or two fights, we'll see. You know, yeah. was that a singular night, or was that something – that we're seeing. So, uh, you know, look, it's an intriguing main event, and it's, it's kind of cool when when back-to-back -back, uh, main events take place in the same division because you start seeing things shift around and how they meet with each other. I, I kind of like the little continuity of, of how everything affects each other week to week, so it's kind of cool having these back-to-back -back heavyweight main events. Uh, Co-main event, I, I'll be honest, I was a little bit surprised this was the fight that they picked uh, to be in the co-main event, but Alexa Grasso versus Joanne Wood, I think it has all the makings – of a fun fight. I mean, both of these are, uh, you know, kind of strike first fighters and, and, uh, you know, their styles are fun to watch, I guess. And, and I think they should match up pretty well. Anything come out of media day from those two that, that, that led you to believe it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a good fight or a bad fight or, or, or leaning towards one fight or the other. Um, you know, it's funny, Alexa, uh, boy, she is adorable as ever. Um, came out. I know she, she appreciates the mashup. I think she appreciates the fact that, she sees Jojo as somebody that's willing to give her the opportunity to show her skill set. Um, same thing with Jojo. I asked her, you know, when I asked her if, you know, she's coming in with a couple of losses, but the fact that I thought she looked pretty darn good that last fight before it got taken away from her. Uh, and she'll even say, I think she was saying she was winning that round before it got taken away. Um, she's feeling her hands, you know, um, you know, I asked her, I was like, uh, 
you know, what's the difference, the biggest difference in a view, you know, like a married life, you know, is this something that's given you some power or whatever? <laughs> but she didn't want to throw the, she didn't want to play along, you know, and she kind of passed it off the wood in the back. But um, I do feel like we're seeing a new, a newer ish version, version of Jojo where, uh, She's willing to, to, you know, to go a little bit deeper in those strikes. And, and if she has a willing dance partner, which she thinks she will have with Alexa, um, maybe we will get that just stand and brawl and, and, and uh, you know, throwing hands where we can really see who has the better, uh, sharper skills. I think most people, I think what on paper would say that Alexa's coming in with better, more refined hands. But JoJo's got lots of heart, man. Um, she's got great elbows. If she can get in there and make it a little bit dirty, I think she's got a great chance. But both of them looked in good spirits. Um, you know, I, we've always I've always been a homer for JoJo. You know, I'm always going to root for JoJo. She's just, of course. She, she's just so fun. Um, but um, that should be a lot of fun. Because um, if both ladies um, bring it like they were talking, like they were willing to do uh, in today's media day, um, it should be a nice standing you know just throw down um fight so. but you know I, I have a feeling that if alexa starts piecing her up a little bit on the on the, on the stand-up game jojo's going to be looking to try to clinch and get that to the ground and, and make it a little bit dirty and and get a little ground and pound happening but uh yep. um i don't know man it should be a lot of fun i'm i'm I am very interested to see where Alexa's at, you know, because I have seen JoJo improve. I feel like I want to see if Alexa is still, you know, we had a lot of, there was a lot of hope and hype and promise about her at one time for maybe being somebody that can move up the ranks and maybe, you know, challenge for the title. But, I mean, this is one of those fights that we'd have to see some some real improvement here because if she can't get through JoJo and she can't get whatever – um She's probably never going to make it back up to the, the to the upper echelon, you know. That's a fair point. It's a knows? fair point, man. It, it it might not determine any kind of number one contender right now, but I think for both these fighters, you're right. This is a this is a big moment. I think it could be a lot of fun. Like you said, if they do stand and bang, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, we talked so a lot about fun. Matt Brown. Obviously, Brian Brian Barberina and Matt Brown's going to be incredible. That's going to be uh, – there's no way. I mean, I'm going to knock on wood right now. I Hopefully, I'm not jinxing it. But, yeah, like, Every <laughs> time you say there's no way, I'm like, where's wood? Where's the wood? Oh, man. <laughs> I, but I think it's got to be a fun fight. But uh, I'll tell you the one that I am really have circled, man, the one that I'm that – I'm, I mean, I'm intrigued about it, but I just think it's the most impactful in the division, of course, is Askar Askarov versus Kaikara France, man. I mean, that's yeah. the that's one that I honestly I thought would be – the, the co-main event of the night, but maybe they're a little bit concerned. You know, obviously, you know, the, the, the matchmakers and Dana and those guys that are laying out, they're thinking about entertainment value, and, and maybe they think it's going to be a grapple-heavy, you know, fight, which it certainly could be. I mean, especially if Oscar Askarov is having his way in it. Uh, it's probably a lot of controlling wrestling and that sort of thing. So maybe that's not why it's the co-main event, I guess, is like the entertainment flow of the night. But, I mean, essentially it's – it's got to be, you know, a, a number one contender fight at the very least, especially for Asker Askarov. You know what I mean? He's right yeah. there. So um, I, I'm, 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 uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm really circling this one as, as an important fight on the card. And uh, I don't know any, anything from those two guys. I know Askarov um, obviously has to use a translator, and um, you know, may, maybe. But he, he talks a little trash through his translator sometimes, which is kind of fun. Yeah. So was there anything there from either guy? I almost, I, I definitely almost felt like he was, he's still kind of harboring a chip on his shoulder. You know, that, that Moreno fight still weighs heavily on his head. And I think when people bring up all these other people that are, you know, battling for contendership, you know, and who's going to get it next. And then those guys, him and Figueredo just keep running it back to 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 back, to back you know, <laughs> you know, I just feel like, uh, he, you know, he's got something, he's got a little grudge on his shoulder. I think he really wants to prove, you know, you know, in fact, just having that 14 0 and one, which is that draw from the Marino fight. Um, I think he's just, you know, he's, I think he's maybe a little upset that people aren't giving him the credit and, and aren't pushing and asking for him to get that shot sooner than others. Uh, you know, he keeps having to go through these guys where in his mind, he doesn't think he lost that fight. You know, and uh, which I guess he didn't. It was a draw, but still, he thinks that he did the best of, of whatever. So I just feel like he's coming in with a chip on his shoulder. Kai Car France. I mean, uh, I love the guy's just his mentality and his his uh, personality. Seems like a fun guy that actually would be kind of fun to go out and have some drinks with. Um, 
and and he's tough as all nails. I mean, this is going to be a really really tough uh, fight. I mean, I think if I had to had to pick between the two, I think I probably would lean with Askarov. But um, Car yeah. France, man, had a great performance in his last fight. Um, you know, going in there and and fighting a guy, you know that. Uh, you know, is just tough as nails and that I thought was going to be too big for him in, in Cody Garbrandt, and he fucking starched him, and he made him look bad. And, uh, you know, uh, which that's a whole other story of another Ohio guy that I'm just like, man, what happened there? Mm. But, man, what, what Car France did to him, um, anybody that had any doubts on the power that he's able to, to, to pack and uh, his uh, heart, I mean, that it's – you know, it's going to be tough. I just, man, Askarov is, uh, he's just on another level right now. And while Car France, if he does, I wouldn't be surprised if he does beat him. You know, I've been wrong plenty of times. I just think that uh, Askarov has that chip on his shoulder and he's not going to take it off until he's sitting across from uh, the champ trying to get that belt back. You know, I think uh, anybody that's getting slotted against him has... Uh, is going to be fighting uh, a guy that's going to be really, really pissed off and has nothing to do with you. It's him against the universe and everybody <laughs> that's standing in front of him and and that next chance at the belt. You know, um, I just feel like uh, he's he has every possibility to to, to get that belt, and uh, uh, I think it's just going to unfortunately in this one, it's just going to go through Car France to get to it. Yeah. It's a great way to put it. It's like, look, man, this is not your fault, but you're going to have to pay the price. Sorry, bro. <laughs> yep. Hate to do it, but uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not I'm not nothing personal. I'm not going to get an L. I'm not going to get that L. <laughs> Listen, yeah. the, uh, the the main card rounds out with uh, Ilya Latifi and Alexi Olenek, which just has bizarre something happening written all over it. Something weird is <laughs> going to happen there, I know. And uh, Vyacheslav Borshev, Slava Claus versus Mark Diakese. There's a reason that one's opening up the main card. That looks yeah. like it's going to be uh, fireworks, man. And and listen, I mean, you get down to the prelims on here. I mean, there's there's okay, there's some that you go, okay, I don't know. But Manon Firo, that's the name I'm looking for on the prelims. And to me, she looks like the real deal, man. And, and I'm actually a little bit surprised this one was on the prelims as well because I feel like Manon Firo is just about ready to break into that that next level, you know, not necessarily contendership, but at least into the rankings and people really paying attention and talking about her. And and if she beats Jennifer Maya, a name like that, man, I, I'm, I'm not saying she's skyrocketing to the top of the division, but I don't know. She looks to me like somebody you, you want to pay attention to because she's fun to watch fight and she's, she's dangerous too. So, um, yeah, man, I, I think overall, I, I, shoot, I'm, I'm skipping over Max Griffin and Neil Magny, man. That's, that's going to be yeah, a good fight on the prelims that. as well. That should be a, that should be a really good one. That should be. It's funny. I I almost got sad there for a moment because I almost was like, "What'd you put on your staff picks?" Oh, no but yeah, I mean that's at the UG. The, <laughs> the uh, that Neil Magny and Max Griffin. I mean that's tough. I mean I like both guys. Uh, I did happen to lean on Magny as much as it pains me because I like Max Griffin a lot. I think this is just one of those fights where uh, Magny's just gonna make it. You know dirty and just hold him against the cage and control him and then he's just gonna he's just gonna win control time he's gonna win via control time on that one unfortunately i think with his size and stuff if max can't separate and do some damage i think neil's just gonna sort of manhandle him unfortunately but who knows uh maybe not it wouldn't be a bad not, i mean but, maybe not the most exciting game plan but it wouldn't be a bad game plan to go out there that's with, it you know? you know that's one of those fights where you know all of us realize both of them could strike and both can do whatever, but it's one of those fights where, I don't know, too recently I, I've been getting decent returns on my Magni picks just for that because he's smart enough to know the W is more important than um, just being flashy and going for that knockout or whatever. Magni's all about getting them wins, and uh, Max wants to get that flashy knockout. I mean, I know he wants to get the win as well, but um, it's just going to be a matter of who's going to be able to to force the other into their fight. But Neil usually has a pretty good, does a pretty good job of slowing the fight down to his pace. And and if that happens, um, it might be one of those kind of like, damn, I thought that fight was going to be a lot better, and then we see a decision, you know, go his way or something. But but who knows? Maybe maybe Max will Max will will take it away. But um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a you know it's. One of those cards, and I know you even asked me, you're like, 
is it going to be gangbusters there? And I hear tickets are doing okay or doing well. It's a big but, building, right? That's, but a, that's a big building. Nationwide's build. a big one. That's where the, the Columbus Blue Jackets play. I want to say anywhere between 18,000 and 20,000 um, yeah. seats. It's not the biggest by any means, but it's a, it's a decent uh, arena. It's Especially a nice for a arena. Fight night. It's big for a fight night. Right. It's like, yeah, when you say it like that, it's fucking huge for a fight night when you think about it. But looking at this card, um, you know, there's not a lot of things outside of, you know, like um, Matt Brown. There's not a lot of ties to this area. Even Curtis Blades, we were sort of stretching and say, oh, here's the blue collar guy that's not far away and the state not too far away. Maybe some of his crowd will come. But, um, Again, this is, I think maybe this is like what we said before when they said about some of these fight nights, when Dana had his vision of what fight nights were before, it was the, it was the people battling to try to get near that contender spot. You know, like the bigger the bigger ones where the bigger pay-per-views and those, those are the ones that are already in the contender spot. Those are the ones that are, you know, just maybe got out of the contender spot. So I think some of these ones here are, are fights that mean something, but with maybe no real immediate ramifications for the for the division out of any of them, you right. know, and, and and that's up and down the line. I mean, I think we'll get to see some some good fights, and I think we're going to see some people we haven't really seen much of that, you know, we don't know much. Like I don't know much about, uh, uh, gosh, uh, Alish Bob Kizrev, Tennis <laughs> Tulinen, you know. Uh, so for me, that's when I'm like, okay, I think I've seen this guy before, but I mean, thirteen and zero, you know, that's impressive. You know, um, two Russian guys going it. You know, um, it'd be interesting uh, how the uh, blue collar Columbus fans react <laughs> when uh, you hear a couple Russian guys get named out there. I'm thinking whether or not people have anything to do with them. You're going to get some booze in the crowd. You know, just from where we're at in the middle. Middle of America, you know, you might get some, uh, uh, you might get some booze on this one. <laughs> that's funny. It's you're probably right. It is uh, funny. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you're like these are my people. I, I, I know. Yeah, like yeah. I came, I, I came from here. I know yeah. what my people are gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this, I mean, and it's you know, I was proud of the fact that uh, Curtis said. He's like, man, Midwest people, man. He's like, there's something about him, man. He's like, I just like Midwest people. He's like, I was walking around exploring the, the town a little bit, and everybody was just like, hey, how are you, you know, uh, being friendly. And that's Midwest America. You know, you go to a lot of cities, you see a very large black man walking down the street. Nobody's saying, hey, how are you, you know. But in Ohio, they're like, hey, bro, what's up? How are you, you know. That's funny. I love this place, man. I love Columbus. Uh you know, it's good people. It is good people. And it's great food, man. Everybody so far um, enjoying, uh, you know, from what I hear, the places they've had, they've had good food. But, man, I'm a little bummed, man. Some of the, the food places I want to go to and some of the old places down around the Short North, which is a fun area that's kind of sandwiched in between um, campus and downtown. A lot of the restaurants and places have turned over because just like here, like Vegas, like everywhere else, rents are through the roof. So a lot of restaurants uh, and places yeah. that you may be – loved and adored for years and years have been pushed out of certain areas but um but yeah man I, I i love this place man it is good people but man uh i i would be surprised if i if we didn't hear booze when they said russian names <laughs> regardless of how nice people are in the midwest this is still this is still you know you know the the, the old line they always said was that ohio was the heart of it all that was one of the slogans because you know we're like the heartbeat of america in America right now, everywhere else, if you hear Russia, people are going to boo, you know, whether or not, obviously, these fighters have nothing to do with what the hell is going on. But um, I just know my peoples. There's going to be some booze. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking for that on the uh, the prelim stream. It is uh, ESPN yeah. and ESPN Plus for uh, the entire card. And, of course, Cold Coffee will be there covering the event. I will not. I'll be watching it on television, uh, watching it on my computer, actually. I don't know what I'm going to do. Listen, uh, I, I did want to make brief mention. I know this hasn't been a part of your coverage whatsoever, but 1X is this weekend, and it's Saturday. Yeah. I wish it was Friday, to be honest with you. I, 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 they do a lot of Friday events, and I'm guessing it had something to do with scheduling or something, why they're doing Saturday. It just sucks because I know I'm going to have to watch a lot of 1X on, on tape delay, basically. Like, there's just no – like, it's 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 20 – it's 20 fights. It's like 11 hours of coverage. I can't do oh, wow. 11 hours of coverage and then and then switch over to the UFC and do six or seven hours of that. You know what I mean? It's just impossible. So I think what I'm going to do 
is watch the grand finale maybe. The grand finale is on pay-per-view, um, so if you're planning on watching that, be ready for that. It is a $40 pay-per-view. It's the first time they've done pay-per-view uh, to that level, I think, in, in one championship history. So just making you aware that um, there are some big fights on that one. Of course, Angela Lee Stant Fair Texas is the headliner, the one that everybody's talking about, the mixed rules fight uh, with oh, Rod yeah. and, and Demetrius Johnson is going to be on there. I I, listen, uh, Adrian Morais is on there with Yu Yu Wakamatsu. I'm looking at Shinya Oki and Yoshihiro Akiyama. I know that they're a little long in the tooth at this point in their career, but they're still Japanese legends. And they don't like each other very much. And it kind of reminds me of like some, some old school pride days or what have you. Yeah. Uh, you you know, you've got John Wayne Parr and Edward Foley in there. That's the retirement fight for John Wayne Parr. Um, so that's a lot on the main card, but you've got some great fights on the prelims as well. Now, all the prelims will be on YouTube. They'll stream live on their YouTube channel. Um, we'll have a post set up for you at the Underground if you want to check it out over there, but it's being provided by one championship. But I don't know. I guess I just want to bring attention because – it is cool. I mean, the fact that they're doing this, this 20-bout, 11-hour marathon, it's cool. It's just going to make it tough to watch everything. I think this is the one where you kind of have to – I'm just going to have to watch a lot of it in, in, in replay, I guess, unfortunately, is, is the reality of the situation. But I just – I am looking forward to it, man. I, I, I'm, it's, it's pretty cool, man. They, they, they blew it out of the water for this with uh, for one championship. Yeah, man. I could watch Daniel Kelly on repeat all day long. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> just a fan of the grappling skills. No, there's a, I know you are. Just a fan of the grappling, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just, a, just, just a fan of the grappling and her, and her opponent. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of her opponent's grappling as well. Uh, very much so. <laughs> um, yeah, no. That's an. I mean, that's it's a that's a very very cool card, man. Um, a lot of good names. Uh, a lot of fun. But it just it's so early. <laughs> so wow. early. You know. But whatever. I know they're doing um, it. They're doing it for the local. They're doing it for the locals in Singapore, so that it makes sense in, in local Singaporean time. And they're actually. I, I talked to Chatri Sitchidong earlier this week, so if you want to check out that interview, it's on the Underground YouTube channel as well. And, you know, he said, "Listen, we're kind of testing out pay per view because it's it's the first time, from my understanding, like it's a pay per view like everywhere. And unless they have some kind of guaranteed contract with certain countries, it's like pay per view everywhere. So they're kind of testing out the waters." Um, to see how the market does and that, so it's you know it's a it's a big moment for them. It's a celebration, but it's also kind of them starting to shift their business model a little bit as well. Um, they're supposed to have a new U.S. TV deal announced within the next couple of weeks. I've been told. Oh, wow. uh, I I don't know what it is. Nobody will nobody will spill the the beans on that one, man. They, you know they just say it's coming up, and of course once they get the U.S. Uh, TV contract, they're also going to come bring uh, events stateside as well. So that's all in the plans for them. So if you can if you can. You know, squeeze a little one X into your life this weekend. I mean, I, I do think there's some some fights that are definitely uh, worth watching. Uh, hey, I did want to ask you, Cole Coffee, about uh, because it was it came up today, man. This whole Jorge Masvidal, Colby Covington thing. I was I was listening in to uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission meeting uh, call this morning, and Gamebred Fighting Championship uh, was 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 up for a promoter's license there, and it was on the docket, and it was kind of interesting because the executive director when it came up. And I'm not saying that it was inappropriate, but I don't know. It did seem a little bit. It was just like it comes up and he's like, well, here's a very interesting piece of news. I would have assumed that this would have been taken off our agenda. Or this would have been requested to be off our agenda. And he's he's right, if I'm being honest with you. He's right because on the promoter's licenses, when you apply, you have to show that you have funding available. You know, they check all your bank records and all that stuff too. But they do ask about – your personal history as well, including like arrest history and any pending litigation or anything like that. Obviously, he would have filled that out well in advance of this alleged incident with Colby Covington. Um, but ultimately what happened was they, they tabled uh, the discussion of the organization of Game Bread Fighting Championship to another day. So for him to get resolved, uh, this legal thing. But I don't know, I found it interesting. Number one, I'm sure this is an implication that Jorge never considered when he ran up on Colby Covington and punched him in the face, allegedly right. in Miami. Allegedly. Uh, but you know, <laughs> this is a very real. This is a very real thing. I mean, if he gets convicted, yeah. they could easily say, "Listen, man, you're a convicted felon, or you're a whatever." Like, we're not granting you a promoter's license here in Nevada. It would seem a little weird to me, but they absolutely would be well within their rights to do it. Um, so it just goes to show you, and, and obviously. It's this whole – I don't want to relate it to the Cain Velasquez situation because it is um, so different. The circumstances are so completely different. But I guess it's just another reminder that when you do take the law into your own hands, there are going to be repercussions for some things that you probably didn't anticipate at the moment. And um, I don't know, man. It's just I, – I, I was ready to be over this whole Mazidal Covington thing. Um, but I guess we're going to be dealing with it longer after this Monday attack. What? Well, I guess what was your take when you heard it? What's been your thing like – 
good old, hey, hey Mazudal, good for you for doing what you said you were going to do? Or like, hey, what are you doing? You had a chance to fight him and it didn't work. I mean, I've, I guess I've seen like both opinions. Some people saying, hey, Jorge did what he promised he would. And then other people saying, hey, you could have done that in the octagon and you didn't. You know, why do it in the street? What, what, what What's your take been on it? Well, apparently he couldn't do it in the octagon when he had the chance. So, I mean, if, if being able to kind of run up and sucker, uh, sucker punch somebody – <laughs> helps you seal the deal, you know, then I guess he did what he needed to do. Um, and it's what he said he was going to do. Um, you know, honestly, I bet if you would ask him if he knew in hindsight that if doing this was going to cause him a problem to have to delay, and I only say delay because I don't think – remember, the, the, the Nevada Commission is in the business of making money – by putting on events, it's not in their best interest to pass judgment on guys, especially once it's been dealt with and it's in the past. It's just hard for them, I guess, to probably agree with while it's still ongoing. But right. I don't see, even if he gets a felony, does whatever, I don't see them stopping that anything. We've seen people like Mayweather that had trouble in the past and other people that had trouble in the past that certainly don't get problems um, setting up events, you know, when there's enough money involved. Granted, a Mayweather event and a... Uh, Jorge Masvidal Productions, whatever, and it'll be two very, very different, yeah. two very, slight, very different events. Slight but, different amount know, of tax money coming in for, yeah. the, you know, for that one. But I still think that they probably, once it's all said and done, I don't see them holding that against him um, for something like that. You know, if it was something um, where the event, um, you know, say he was he was charged with sexual aggression on on a minor or something, and then the event had something to do with women and ladies and i can see where they're like okay this is this is not something we want to put our name behind because there's gonna be other thoughts i think this they'll just see is this guy had a grudge with the guy everybody knows that the commission knows the beef between the two of them so i think they understand that these are two fighters that you know their beef spilled out into the streets um i don't see them letting this hang too much over his head i think it's just got to get through this initial phase they need to know what they're dealing with so the fact that they just shelved it seems just seems the prudent play at this point. But um, I'm not surprised, um, motherfucker, um, <laughs> because uh, George said it was going to be, uh, you know, on site. And I think he probably saw an opportunity when, you know, an opponent um, wasn't really paying attention and wasn't in that mode. You know, there's definitely a difference when you're going in to eat or you just finished eating or whatever it was. Um, and then to run up on on somebody un you know not ready for it, um, I've been sucker punched in the past and it absolutely sucks. And you um, made them pay for it, right? Well, no, at the time because uh, it took me. Uh, I didn't go down. I remember I was thinking I was like, yeah, but another buddy of mine jumped on him before I had a chance to. Um, but that guy got lucky then. Yeah, he did. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't carry the same weight behind my punches like I did now. <laughs> um, but still, um, you know, there's a big difference. You know, people say you should have been able to do it, you know, in the cage. There's there's a difference when somebody's expecting you to do something. There's a very a big difference when you jump somebody on the street unawares, allegedly or not. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, there's just a big difference in the preparation, the way you prepare yourself to, to take something. So, um, but he got a damn good shot, you know, I mean, to, if, if, if they did fracture the tooth or whatever they said, that's a damn good shot, you know? Um, but again, those without those gloves, you know, that's knuckle up bone on bone, you know, you could do some damage and, um, but, um, yeah, it is what it is. I think George is willing to pay the price. I, I ain't mad at him and I ain't sad for Colby, you know, yeah. Colby said some nasty fucking shit, man. Um, you kind of deserve to get sucker punched. Honestly. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with pretty much everything you said there, man. I mean, you, you can't condone it, obviously, right? But, I mean, this is just the reality. This is this yeah. is what they, 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 they have, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as Jorge said all along, this isn't a joke to me, man. The things, especially when you're bringing yeah. my family, um, that's going to happen. And a, as a parent, I can yeah. tell you the same thing. You talk about my kids, like, that's not okay with me. You know what I mean? We and, saw and what Kane was okay, willing to we'll do. Forgive and forget. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, hundred percent. So I, I could have been worse. I, I, I agree with you been as worse. well. I, I oh, could have been. I, I agree with you that uh, I don't think this is going to ultimately prevent. It would be kind of a weird argument, right? Like, hey, 
we were willing to sanction you two guys fighting each other in a cage because we got paid on it. But now that you guys went and did it in the street, we're no longer willing to let you promote events here in our state. You know what I mean? It'd be kind of a weird argument to make. Like, as yeah. you said, I mean, the, the the commission had extra police officers and extra inspectors and extra security. You know what I mean? They know what's going on between these. Now, if it was Masvidal just sucker punched some random dude in the street that w that wasn't Colby Covington, then maybe they've got a then maybe they've got a, an argument to make that you know, hey man, we feel like you're kind of a loose cannon at this point, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I think because it's a well documented rivalry, I can't imagine they'll try to stop him from having a promoter's license. I mean, imagine if they knew a fighter that's like um, punched like old people in bars. That stolen people's <laughs> phones and smashed their property and has done all kinds of stuff. You would think if they want to make a point, they wouldn't license that person to fight in their state, right? Oh, see what you did there, Cole. Right? Uh, but they think? certainly <laughs> don't seem to care about that. So it's like, uh, you know, what's your true color? Is, it, if, is, is enough dollar value make you, you know, do this? I don't know. I just don't see it doing anything long term. And it really shouldn't. I mean, nah. No, I mean these dudes just have beef, man. They did their shit, you know. Let the let that shit play out in court. If if he's gonna, you know, sue him for whatever. If they're if he has to go to jail, and if Kobe tries to get money out of George to pay for his tooth, so be it. You know, let that mm -hmm. be the end of it. Let them be able to do their business after the fact. It'll be done. It'll be whatever. Um, I just don't see the the commission would seem very very petty. If this is the one where they try to choose, if they're not going to do it for everybody the same way, because then at that point, you know, you're just you're playing favorites to the big pockets and ignoring the, the guys that are actually grinding and struggling and need these events. You know, um, but, you know if you're not going to punish the rich white dude, don't punish the ethnic guys that aren't making as much money to, to, to make a business and make shit work, you know. Uh, it's just, you know, that would be really, really a bad look, but we've seen yeah. stupider things happen. <laughs> I, oh, we have to, I, I mean, listen, I think you're right. Just while it's ongoing, let's get it settled. We can't do it while there's ongoing, yeah. you know, Makes uh, sense. things going. So I, I agree with that. I you, it's funny as you're talking about things. My favorite, I think, commission meeting of all time. Well, the Nick Diaz stuff was great, but I Clear remember the when. <laughs> the, the fifth, fifth. yeah, the, that was amazing. That was great. Twenty three <laughs> times, I believe. I counted it. It was twenty three times, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that that was funny. Um, but no, no <laughs> fifth. So many amendments. No, I, I, no, <laughs> uh, no. It was uh, when they had Mayweather in there because they wanted to speak to Mayweather about some of the things they saw during a countdown, like the prime time, I think is what it was called in boxing, not countdown or something, whatever they called it in boxing, one of his pre-fight specials. And one of them was like, one of the questions was kind of interesting because it was like they showed a sparring session where like one of his training partners like sparred for like an hour straight and they were like, we're a little bit concerned that maybe that's not really the healthiest for a fighter's safety. And I was like, okay, that's actually maybe something, you know, worth talking about. You know, what, what kind of training are you allowing these guys to do? So I was like, all right, well, all right, that's worth a while. But then the next one was about uh, him smoking marijuana. You know, oh, my gosh, is he, why were you smoking marijuana on this? We can't be showing that to the youth. So that was just silly in itself, right? Like, because this is back when they were so anti-marijuana, da-da-da. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, thankfully they're not that way anymore. But that was silly in itself. But the best – was Floyd's answer. He was like, oh, no, no, that wasn't marijuana. That was like a prop weed. It was like movie weed. Like it was just fake <laughs> weed for the TV. And they were like, prop weed. He's like, yeah, yeah, it was it was prop weed. And they, <laughs> they were just like, okay then, Mr. Mayweather. Well, that, that answers that question. Let's yeah. carry on. I was just Let's like, come on. <laughs> removed. I make a motion to take that and change it to prop weed. In fact, let's just take it off this whole case, okay? <laughs> second it. Prop I'm going to second myself as well, and it oh, is done. That was the best, man. I'm like, this man has some balls to yeah. sit up there and be like, oh, I was just smoking some movie weed up there. <laughs> That's some good shit. Oh, good stuff. I think stuff. others would use that one. I'm like, no, sir. I know you have a no. test, but that was... It, it was uh, it's the medical place because that clearly was prop weed I was smoking. Clearly, 
Clearly. Oh, man. All right, so listen, uh, I, you got a few days left in fight week. You got the fights coming up. We'll be covering yeah. that. Are you uh, You got any big plans in, in Columbus? I mean, you are home. Is Does anybody that's in the Ohio area that need a, uh, to find you at a local watering hole? Is there a place that, that cold coffee is going to be? I'm going to be uh, – I'm going to go by Zeno's uh, tomorrow. Zeno's is a neighborhood bar uh, that I used to live down the street um, while I was going to school here. And, and then even afterwards, it was like uh, – Gosh, just a local, local watering hole. Or we used to just, I lived in that place. I fell asleep in that place. Did all kinds of shit. So I'm going to go by there at some point. Uh, tonight, me and Matt Erickson are going to go grab some uh, wings at the old Roosters, which oh, is nice. uh, around the corner. Which Roosters is kind of like, their wings kind of remind me of like Hooters because like they're, the wings have like the tip still on them. Um, they're pretty good, uh, but they don't have like girls running around and, and like, booty shorts or whatever so um, well i'm sure that's i'm sure that's better for you i'm sure you're yeah, normally yeah. offended by that you know yeah like, normally i'm like you don't have to do that for my enjoyment <laughs> i want you to be comfortable wear what's comfortable for you to serve me those delicious wings that i come here for um i just want them to be comfortable and just you know <laughs> tell them i'm here and i'm in their corner um so no i think we're gonna go grab wings uh later on and then um you know, I have some family down around the Fairborn area. I was thinking about trying to maybe go down there, but I feel like I'm trying to cram too much stuff. And honestly, last week and then uh, was just tiring and emotionally. You know, I think earlier I could tell I was tired. If I'm crying, starting to, like, tear up, watching my own video, listening to Mark Coleman tell a story, I was like, maybe you're tired, bro. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> I think this this trip has been, has been wearing on you a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of hours, so, I mean, part of me wants to see all these people. Another part of me is just like, bro, just relax and just let it happen, you know. See who I want to see, see who I see, uh, and just make sure I, you know, enjoy it by getting some of the foods I want to eat. You know, I already went out to the uh, the pizza place uh, in my hometown in Yehano where we used to go every Friday, Massey's oh, wow. Pizza. And, oh, it was fantastic. It was uh it was wonderful. It was it was kind of I hadn't had it in like I don't know fifteen uh, shoot no fifteen twenty years probably, and wow. uh, it was wonderful. It was delicious. It was really really good. So like you know just do something like that you know. So I think yeah, what friends I see those are the ones I just happen to stumble upon because That's at this funny. point uh, yeah I just need to I need to stay focused on fight week stuff I think <laughs> yeah not not a bad idea that stuff uh, catches up to you well yeah. uh, send my send my regards to Matt Erickson uh, I haven't yeah, seen him yeah it's good to see him on the road it's good to see him on the road man and uh, today was great man he he uh he handled the John Morgan details uh duty and uh was handling the, the questions I just did some follow up questions here and there and was able to focus on the video stuff man so it was uh it was good man uh, that's awesome. I definitely didn't even know appreciated having there. him there. Yeah, it was good. Makes makes life a little bit easier. Well, good for you. Yeah. Please say hello to him uh, for me, and I'm sure you guys will have fun tonight. I, by the way, speaking of trips home, I think I'm going to try to sneak out and see my first uh, live – well, no, I take that back. It wouldn't be my first live PFL event because they came to the they came to Mandalay Bay for a couple of events, and I went to some of those for their playoffs. But uh, the PFL, if, if you didn't see the announcement, their first round uh, of events, their regular season events, are going to be in Arlington, Texas, which is um, a suburb of, uh, of in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So – um, I might try to sneak out there for a, a, a PFL event, man. Take that in and go go see a little family at the time. I'm sure I'll probably run into the Matt Wells. I imagine he'll be covering it for you guys as well. So um, shout out to PFL visiting Dallas, and I think I might end up going to uh, going to an event here in uh, in early April. Whoa, so we'll see how that you. plays out. In the meantime, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm not. I wish it was the uh, the, the night that. Um, that Kayla was fighting. Like, obviously, I, I'm, I'm a big Kayla Harrison fan, but Kayla is going to be fighting yeah, on the are. May 6th card, which will be in the uh, May 7th is uh, USC 274, so we'll be in Phoenix. Look at you talking trash over there. Come I know, I'm just she's kidding. Badass. I love Kayla. She's so badass. And she's pretty. And she's a badass. So whatever. Yeah, she's good. I, it was funny. Our our, uh, our, <laughs> our last interview that we did uh, a couple weeks ago, I was – before we started recording, because uh, I had I had heard the details of her contract and they they are significant, and uh, I, I I asked her how she was doing before she started recording. She's like, oh, I'm doing good. I was like, you're supposed to be like, I'm rich, John. I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of well, laughed. A why little don't bit, you so. share the details? I, you haven't even told me off off record 
or whatever. Well, I'll tell you off record because that's where I heard it was off record. But let, uh. I, as 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 I phrased it to her, the type of numbers that I heard is that uh, like if she cashes that million dollar check again, it, that big check might just sit in the corner for a little while until she you know until she just decides to go cash it because she's already got so much sitting in the bank wow, already that Jesus. she just lets it sit there. So. Uh, she she did very well for herself in this contract. <laughs> They're like, we're we're gonna get a new TV deal, but instead of uh, to PFL, can you write it out to Kayla <laughs> Harrison, <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then we'll have her give a little bit back to us when she's done with it. Uh, that would be great. Yeah, she's actually your broadcast partner now. We'll see. If, we'll see if we can get a little licensing fee from her, man. We'll make. <laughs> That's phenomenal. So anyway, well, that's the future. It's gonna be uh, April's gonna be busy. May's gonna be busy. Uh, it's it's good, man. It's it's uh, it's good to get things lined up, and I'm sure we'll be uh, crossing paths again soon. Next week, a, a rare no UFC, no Bellator week. So maybe we'll just get together and pound some Ooh, beverages and maybe, maybe like see that. what. We won't really have any fights to talk about, so I, maybe we just you know. We can talk about how long your hair is getting. Look at that. Your hair is getting start. long, dog. I know. I'm getting a couple. Of, I'm getting a couple blonde ones in here. If you've noticed, I don't, I don't know. Oh, like, is that what? Is that where the co- what yeah, color that is? Yeah, yeah, couple. Couple, a couple of my dark hairs are turning blonde here. It's kind of wild, so man. So weird. But, uh, oh, you were so blonde the whole time, and who knew? Yeah, who that knew? celebrated my birthday a week ago, and now I'm starting to get some some blonde hairs in here. Yeah, Damn I got, I got. See all these blondes in my beard here? You know, these. I've always liked those little highlights that you put in there, man. Those are nice. <laughs> the fact that you, that you take some time. That together. I add. I took the time to add them in. Yeah, you know. <laughs> How Getting do. old sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, man. I appreciate the time. I, I will go check out the Matt Brown feature, so I recommend everybody do that. Have your have your uh, tissues ready in case yes, you start to water some, up a little bit. There's some points in there. There's some points in there. I'm telling you. Woo. Have that already. Uh, make sure you're, uh, you're you're supporting us if you can. Rate us, review us, all the places. Subscribe wherever you're listening to us, and uh, leave some feedback if you can. And if you can take it to the next level, take it over to patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow and support us over there. We certainly would appreciate that, uh, especially these days after we gave up our job with benefits and all that. I, I hear you, Chris <laughs> Dawkins. I hear you, Chris Dawkins. In the meantime, we'll just tell everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.